Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial, Functional Analysis, Class Number 13. In this class, we learn one very very important theorem known by the Han-Banach theorem. Let us see the statement of Han-Banach theorem. Han-Banach theorem. Capital M B A linear subspace of a normed linear space capital N and F B A functional defined on capital M. Then F can be extended to a functional F0 defined on the whole space capital N satisfying the condition norm F0 is equals to norm F. To prove the Han Banach theorem, uh, the previous lemma is very useful, which is explained in video number 12. Right? Let us prove this statement. <laughs> Let capital N be a normal linear space. Introduction to the theorem. Let capital N be a normal linear space and capital M be a linear subspace. Capital M be a linear subspace of capital N. That is M subset to N. And f is a functional f is a functional defined on capital m f is a functional defined on capital m what is mean by functional functional means is a linear is a continuous linear transformation is a continuous linear transformation from capital M into either real numbers or complex numbers. This is known as functional. <laughs> I repeat, learn the definition of functional. F, here F is a functional defined on capital M. Functional means functional is a continuous linear transformation from M into capital R or C. It is a continuous linear transformation. Right. So, this is the introduction part to the theorem. N is a normal linear sorry. N is a normal linear space. Capital N is a normal linear space. M B A linear subspace of capital N and F is a functional defined on capital M. Functional means it is a continuous linear transformation from M into either real numbers or complex numbers. So right by previous lemma. by previous lemma to understand this lemma watch video number 12 by previous lemma there exists a subspace by previous lemma there exists a subspace m naught of capital m m naught of capital m such that m naught is equals to capital m plus set x naught capital m plus set x naught it means m naught is generated or spanned by m and x naught m naught is spanned by m and x naught for all x naught does not belongs to capital m and this functional f can be extended this functional f can be extended to another functional f naught such that norm f naught is equals to norm f this is very very important lemma by using this lemma we use we prove the hand banach theorem let us see by using previous lemma to understand this previous lemma you watch video number 12 for detailed proof there exists a subspace m naught of the linear of the linear space capital m like this and defined like this m naught is equals to m naught is equals to m plus set x naught m plus set x naught it means m naught is spanned by m naught is spanned by m and the element x naught remember that where that x naught not belongs to capital m where x naught not belongs to capital m that x naught is taken from real num uh, that x naught is taken from 
the linear space i mean normal linear space capital n so right and the functional f can be extended the functional f can be extended to another functional the functional f can be extended to another functional satisfying the condition satisfying the condition norm f not is equals to norm f so right now we prove we try to prove the hand banach theorem so what happens if m not is equals to n this is the important point if m not is equals to n then the theorem is proved then there is nothing to prove the theorem is proved if m not is equals to n then the theorem is proved if m not not equals to if m not not equals to n and this m not is subset to n this m not is subset to n then by continuing then by continuing this process then by continuing this process of extension then by continuing this process of extension then by continuing this process of extension we obtain we obtain functionals we continuing this process of extension we obtain functionals f not comma f1 comma f2 comma f3 comma and so on defined on the subspaces defined on the subspaces m not comma m1 comma m2 comma m3 and so on respectively respectively such that such that they satisfies the condition norm f not is equals to norm f1 is equals to norm f2 is equals to norm f3 is equals to and so on and the sequence m1 is subset to m2 uh, m not is subset to m1 m not is subset to m1 it is subset to m2 it is subset to m3 and so on this is very very important one observe that by continuing the process of extension by continuing the process of extension we obtain the functionals f not f1 f2 f3 and so on defined on m not m1 m2 m3 respectively satisfying two conditions norm f not is equals to norm f1 is equals to norm f2 is equals to norm f3 and so on and m not subset to m1 m1 subset to m2 m2 subset to m3 and so on now let us p define one more set let capital p denote let capital t p denote the set of the set of all ordered pairs the set of all ordered pairs let p denotes denotes the set of all ordered pairs functional f comma m functional f not comma m not functional f1 comma subspace m1 and so on we denote it we denote it as an ordered relation and uh, not as an we denote it on ordered relation we denote it on ordered relation <coughs> less than or equals to as fi comma mi less than or equals to fj comma mj if and only if if and only if mi is subset to mj and fi is equals to fj on mi fi is equals to fj on mi we denote all the ordered pairs with the relation less than or equals to as 
ordered pair f y comma m i less than or equals to f y comma m j if and only if it satisfies the condition m i is subset to m j and f i is equals to f f j on the subspace m i it is very trivial to observe that since the ordered pair f comma m belongs to p it means capital p is non empty capital p is non empty it p is non empty and there is a relation ordered relation defined on p it means p is a partially p is a partially ordered set p is a partially ordered set so right remember that since p is non empty and there is a ordered relation there is a ordered relation defined on p defined on p therefore p is a partially ordered set now let us take capital q be the total subset capital capital q be the total subset or it is another in another words chain of p chain of p that is q is equals to set of all ordered pairs fi comma mi then it is very clear because all these ordered pairs are related in ordered relation less than or equals to then this q has an upper bound then this q has an upper bound yes then this q has upper bound thus we conclude one point thus any chain in p any chain in the partially ordered set p has an upper bound has an upper bound observe that any chain in p has an upper bound so any chain in p has an upper bound now you can use now you can use jorn's lemma by jorn's lemma by jorn's lemma i write the jorn's lemma statement every partially ordered set every partially ordered set in which in which each chain every partially ordered set in which each chain has an upper bound has an upper bound has a maximal element has a maximal element i repeat it see the jones lemma statement every partially ordered set in which each chain has an upper bound has an upper bound has a maximal element has a maximal element by applying this jones lemma to our theorem therefore our theorem p has a maximal element p has a maximal element let it be let it be means let the maximal element be capital f comma h in p so p has a maximal element and we say that f comma h is maximal in p so to complete the proof to complete the proof you have to show that you have to show that to complete the proof we show that we show that h is equals to n h is equals to n to complete the proof we show that h is equals to n if possible let we are assuming the contradictive point if possible if possible let h be a proper subspace h be a proper subspace of capital n you have to show that h is equals to n so if possible let us assume that h be a proper subspace subspace of n that is h is subset to n again then again by previous lemma there exists an element y not belongs to capital n and this y not does not belongs to h this y not does not belongs to h 
so it is it, it means that it is a proper subspace so h is a proper subspace means there must be an element in n that is not belongs to h by previous lemma by previous lemma again previous lemma means this is from video 12 please watch video 12 to understand by previous lemma there exists a functional sorry uh, by previous lemma the functional f can be the functional capital f here we denote that functional by capital f the functional capital f can be extended can be extended to capital f not defined on h not is equals to h plus generator y not h plus generator y not which contains which contains h properly which contains h properly what it means what it means h is subset to h not h is subset to h not it means the ordered pair f not comma h not is greater than the ordered pair f comma h the ordered pair f not comma h not is greater than f comma h in capital p in capital p this is a contradiction this is a contradiction why because why because this is a contradiction because of because of p has a maximal element p has a maximal element and that maximal element is f comma h and that maximal element is f comma h this is a contradiction to that this is a contradiction to that f comma h is maximal f comma h is maximal in p so hence our assumption hence our assumption h is a proper subspace h be a proper subspace of capital n this assumption is wrong h is a proper subspace of capital n is wrong thus we conclude that thus we conclude that h is equals to n thus we conclude that h is equals to n so you observe that you observe that by han banach theorem by han banach theorem there must be a functional f naught that is extension of the functional that is extension of the functional f defined on the closed linear space capital m satisfying the condition norm f naught is equals to norm f hence this completes the proof of han banach theorem this completes the proof of the han banach theorem hence proved one of the very very important theorem in the functional analysis in the previous video in the next video i i wish to explain some uh, basic definitions according to this the first one is maximal element and jones lemma in detail we go for in detail and chain and upper bound and partially ordered set like this uh, in the next video or next uh, introduction basic video i want to explain partially ordered set and total subset upper bound and so on we'll try to upload in the next day keep learning wish you all the best